Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So today we're going to do a real world testing between the uh, One Wheel Plus on the right side and the One Wheel Pint on the left. I've kind of covered this already in a three part video uh, where I explain like the dimensions, the features, um, even like the lighting for the two, but I haven't really done any real world testing and the Pint looks like it's going to be sold in the next... Uh, in the next couple weeks, so this is my only opportunity, I think, to get uh, a comparison between these two. This is Cooper, by the way. Can you say hi, Cooper? Say hi, sweetie. <laughs> he's excited. He's been stuck at home the whole day while I've been at work, so he's just happy to get out. Um, so what I'm going to do is a few things. I'm going to start by putting my camera to the right over there. I've kind of positioned it in a location where you can see my whole body and it's a wide angled shot so you can really get good reference in terms of the speed comparison and the whole idea here is to see is there anything noticeable visibly um, in terms of speed between the two. Now on paper the Plus does I think 20 or 21 miles per hour at its highest setting and the Pint is clocked at I think 16 miles per hour for its top setting. Um, on paper, obviously that looks different. Sensation-wise, while I'm writing these, it definitely feels a little bit faster on the Plus, but there are some people that say they can't really tell the difference between the two. Um, during the video, I hope you can make it out, I want you to keep an eye on my right hand. So every time I raise my hand up above my waist, that's me letting you know that I'm feeling the pushback. And the whole idea there is just to let you know what the pushback looks like to you visually versus what I feel sensationally, because some people, for example, have said the pint has a really aggressive pushback, the nose tips up really high. Some people have said they don't see that. So hopefully this will kind of, um, you know, give you some cues as to what's the difference in pushback between the two. Um, between the two boards, I've ridden both of these for about 70-ish miles. Uh, the pint is set to Skyline, which I think is their currently their most aggressive um, setting. No scratching, Cooper. Come here. Come here. Come here. No scratching. I don't want this guy to scratch because this guy scratched his eyes last time and we had to take him in for an ulcer. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, sweetie. Okay. So um, the pint is set to Skyline. They're most aggressive and they're top, they're, uh, it has the highest top speed access. And then the plus is set to uh, Delirium, which is like the Skyline equivalent. Again, highest top speed. Uh, most aggressive. It should be noted that with the Plus you have access to custom shaping. That currently does not affect top speed, but it could affect the sensation of pushback because you do uh, get to adjust that nose, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, just top speed first, and then I'll put the camera back here. We'll do some carving, and then I'll do some accelerations from this point of view so you can kind of see like how the takeoff would would be between the two. Okay, and, and Cooper, you're gonna you're gonna keep an eye on us today. Okay. <laughs> All right. So stay right there, baby. So we are out here actually in um, Las Vegas. This is the westernmost part of uh, Cheyenne. This is located in Summerlin in Las Vegas, and to your left over there, you're looking west, that is La Madra mountain range, and then out to the south and west of here, you have Red Rock Canyon, okay? So we'll go ahead and get started here. do we got left on this 32 minutes okay so the first board I'm gonna be taking out is the pint I'm gonna do two runs with the pint so up and back up and back for a total of four and then I'm gonna to switch to the plus same thing up and back up and back so pint is going first
Okay, so you can see that first run on the plus was a little bit scary. I ignored the pushback and uh, yeah, definitely took a nose dive there. Fortunately, I was able to run out, run that off. Um, so that's going to go back to that pushback. It, it is a stronger sensation on the, uh, on the pint. And because of that, you can look at that two ways as... Cooper, I got it. You can look at that as a problem being that it's going to ruin your riding experience but you can also look at it as a form of safety between the two okay so now let's go ahead and take a look at acceleration between these two okay. so we'll be taking the uh, pint out first there we go hopefully that's focusing for you guys okay let's take that pint out first again I think the pint is in skyline right now Cooper no scratching
actually let me do one more pair of runs and this time I'll raise my hand again so you guys can kind of see when that pushback is coming and see if the nose kicks up, especially when I'm coming towards you. Okay, now we're gonna do the uh, plus. Again, plus is in delirium right now. One more shot. Do one more there. And then, uh, Cooper made a cameo in there. So you kind of get the idea there that, you know, it may not be visible on camera, but the, but the uh, plus seems a little bit quicker for me. I will say that the pint looks like it gets off the line a little bit quicker. So if you want to call that torque, I guess, but in terms of getting high speed eventually, especially towards the last quarter of that run, I'm definitely noticing that that top speed is coming more in the in the plus. All right, so right now we are at minute 16. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna focus on carving. So let's start with the uh, plus first, or pint, I should say.
one more run. do very minimal effort on my hips in terms of trying to produce a uh, turn. Now we're going to go for the plus again on delirium. So not too bad. I think they look the same on camera, but I definitely felt more input on my part for more effort with the plus. So that pretty much covers it. Um, so now we talk about which would I prefer between the two. You know, I don't think there's a better machine or a good machine. I mean, I don't think there's one machine that's better than the other. I think it really just comes down to what kind of need and what environment you're going to be riding in. So for me, if you're going to ask which one I would choose, I would choose the plus. The reason I would choose the plus is it has that higher top speed and I live in an area that's you know very much a suburban suburban area so I have really wide streets and I like to make really fast big S's in the road and for me it's just easier to have a higher top speed with the plus and also not be kind of limited by the pushback with the pint so with the pushback by that I mean you know if you're carving you're worrying about your balance left to right and then all of a sudden you have this force that kind of kicks you front to back it's just something else that you have to consider and worry about that might kind of ruin that flow you have when trying to make that big s in the road so that's why i would choose the plus in terms of the pint you know if i were living in a city let's say new york or downtown austin where i actually uh, rode the pint i think i would actually prefer the pint over the plus the reason being I'm not really in a location where I get to have many opportunities to reach, you know, that max speed of 20 miles per hour that you would get on the plus. Uh, for me in downtown Austin, there were just so many pedestrians, cyclists, and tons and tons of e-scooter rentals around that unless I went in between cars in traffic, which I guess you could do, I really would not have the environment to open that up all the way past maybe 15 or 16 miles per hour. So for me, when I'm living in a condensed area like that, it's more important to have a package that's more portable in terms of dimensions, and then a package that um, is more maneuverable. You could see in that video that it was very, very easy for me to shift left to right. I mean, almost just with the thought of going left and right, it was very, very easy. So in that case, I would choose the pint. Um, I think that's really the only comparison I can make between the two. In terms of if you're going to be taking this thing like off-road, like, you know, turf that looks like that, I can't really comment because I haven't taken either on that. 
uh, grass, you know, I've taken both on that. It was a little bit hard for me to, to steer on both. But, you know, just for plain pavement riding, I would have to give it, uh, for my personal needs, uh, to the plus. Now, in terms of pushback, let's talk about that. Like I said before, both boards are going to have um, that pushback. Um, they come in different, uh, they come in at a different mile per hour, at a different mile per hour rating for each. So the pint um, comes in at around, I think, 12 or 13 miles per hour. The plus, usually when I would be looking at my phone, comes in at around 16, sometimes 17 miles per hour. Um, besides the uh, threshold at which the pushback comes in, there's also the way that the pushback is delivered. Now, you might have seen in the video that the um, pushback on the pint really, you know, gradually but consistently elevates the nose of that board to the point where, you know, if you were turning, I could see that ruin, ruining your flow, so to speak, that you would be suddenly conscious about uh, the nose tipping up. So it's a much stronger sensation of pushback delivered in the pint. In terms of the plus, I still feel it in my feet, but it's much more subtle. And so because it's more subtle, I'm able to still enjoy my carves and not really feel that sensation of the nose going up so high that I feel like, oh, it's gonna ruin my turning. You know, now that comes at a cost. You saw in the very first run, I almost ate it, right? I mean, the board ate it, it nosedived and I just ran it out luckily. But that's the trade-off is that, okay, you have that higher top speed, that higher threshold for pushback on the plus, but there's also that higher risk for not only uh, not noticing the pushback, um, but also being able to crash, you know, at a much higher speed than the pint. Again. It takes a little getting used to. Things you could do to fix that, of course, are just gonna come down to experience. Of course, not ignoring the pushback and knowing when to recognize it, even though it's different between the two. And then certain things like, you know, protective gear and um, fangs that you can add uh, to both boards. Um, in terms of fangs right now, the Plus obviously has uh, the 2.1 and 2.0 fangs from Land Surf, which are great. I don't think there's any others. I think Sony Wheels makes his own, but I don't know if that's for sale. The Pint has the one by Carbonsmith, which is a really nice setup. It gives it a front handle as well as the wheels, but I don't think there are any other wheel options for the front available or Fang options. I do think Land Surf is developing some um, in the future, but they are not available for sale yet. Um, so yeah, that'll do it between the two. Um, hopefully you guys got something useful out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, uh, please put it down below. As long as I have these two boards, I will, uh, you know, within reason, try to do what I can to demonstrate the differences and similarities between the two. And um, if you could like, comment, or subscribe below, that would be... Say hi, Cooper. Say hi, baby. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> That's like his pacifier. So if you could like, comment, or subscribe below, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. As always, guys, have fun, be safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Say goodbye.